thinking about how I can put a fun plot twist on this video instead of simply talking at you for 15 minutes like I usually do. And I thought, wouldn't it be more fun and interesting if I had my audience take the wheel on this one? I originally was going to randomly select a concept to create in order to show you the process that I use on how to create a really effective concept for your projects. Or I was just gonna pick a previous one that I did from a previous project and show you that one. But then I thought, we have social media. So I took to the gram to ask all 27 of my followers for help. I asked them to give me three things in a Mad Lips type format. A location, a company, and a mood. This will determine my fake client and their fake vision for the project. So, let's create a concept. And now I will randomly select the winning numbers from this red solo cup I found. The Powerball is now $110 million. Our selected location is Chinatown, New York City. Our very real yet very fictitious client is Deloitte. And our mood, adventurous. So I will be crafting an interior design concept for Deloitte who is opening an office in Chinatown, New York City, and they're looking to create an adventurous vibe. Okay, this honestly is not as bad as I thought, considering some of the words that you guys sent in were a bit risque, you naughty dogs. But before I get started, I have a few things to say. First, I never introduced myself. Hey, hi, how you dern? My name is Kelsey, and I am the founder and creative director of Kelsey Design Studio, a full service interior design firm specializing in commercial spaces for small and boutique style businesses. Thank you to everyone on Instagram who submitted a word or participated. And if you'd like to participate in a future video like this, then you'll just have to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe, check out our website, and sign up for our email newsletter for access to our free designer cheat sheets. And the second thing I wanna say was the reason I'm creating this video in general is because I believe very strongly that the concept phase of a project is the most important phase of the project. This is the very first step in your project and it will set the precedent for the remainder of it. You're not just creating a mood board with fun images, you're crafting a story. When I begin the concept phase, I try to think of myself as a storyteller. My job is to find out as much as I can about the client and their goals and their vision in order to help translate that into the physical space. So with that in mind, let's start with our first step in crafting a concept, research. The very first thing I do, even before I have a kickoff meeting with the client, is to do my own research on them. I check out their website, their social media, every single piece of information online I can find about them, the better. I'm trying to get an overall sense for their company culture and what their priorities are when it comes to both the products that or the services that they sell and also how they operate as a company in general. For our fake but real client, Deloitte, I'm basically just going through their website to get a feel for what they do as a business and like what their company values are. I knew a little bit about them to start, but I'll be honest, I am a designer and things like human capital and digital transformation mean literally nothing to me. If we simplify it down, Deloitte is a big four company. They provide consulting services to business from accounting to tech and even risk management. Besides their services, they have a lot of information and website square footage dedicated to their diversity and inclusion practices and sustainability. We love all of that. On their values page, they list the following as their core company values. Lead the way, serve with integrity, take care of each other, foster inclusion and collaborate for a measurable impact. They also have their focus areas and core commitments, which are sustainability, equity, and trust. So right away from all of this, I'm seeing several themes. There's a focus on being leaders in the industry with technology. There's an effort to build trust and create like a welcoming, inclusive culture and to conduct business sustainably. After I've done extensive research on the client, I will then schedule a kickoff meeting with the client and all key stakeholders to interview them and kind of get a sense for what their actual goals and visions are for the project. It's also where you get to hear how the client actually views themselves 
and not necessarily your assumption or your view of them based on their website. Certainly the research phase is super important to like learn as much as you can about them, but always lean on what the client says in the interview, like in the kickoff meeting to determine the direction that you're gonna take with the concept and the project. I'll give an example. So on Deloitte's website, they say they place a high priority on creating a sustainable future. But let's say I sit down with them and they don't really wanna focus on sustainability. It's not their priority. Their priority is to create like a, the most innovative office there is or something that's very like technologically focused. Technologically, I think I just made that word up. So I probably wouldn't move forward with sustainability as one of the key themes. I would probably stick to innovation. My cousin actually works for Deloitte. I could call him up and interview him and get a sense for his views and his opinion on the company, but I've decided I'm going to spare him of my bullshit today. So let's imagine we have our kickoff meeting and everything that the client tells us in this interview aligns with all of the research that we did. Great, we're done with the research. We have all of our information. We would create a page summarizing those core values. This slide is typically short and sweet, but it shows your client that you actually did your research. I'm keeping it simple here and stating their core values exactly as they have them outlined on their website. So those are going to be sustainability, equity, and trust. I like to add images here and a small blurb about what those words actually represent. You can use icons instead of images or something else, but I like to add a visual on the page just to make the themes easier to understand. Just to clarify, you are not creating a presentation about your client. They do not need you to preach to them who they are and what they do. They already know that they are them. You are simply summarizing their core values to show them that you understand what those are. I would try to keep the number of core values between three and five. So you see, I have my page here, sustainability. Uh, I just put like little quick blurbs. Again, like all of this might change in the future. I usually like to get something down and then as I'm progressing with the presentation, I can come back and revise it. Or, you know, after we have a meeting with them to discuss these, I can tweak them. But basically what I have here uh, under sustainability is doing business in a way that fosters a healthy future for humans and the planet. Under equity, I have fostering a culture that promotes inclusivity and camaraderie. And under trust, I have building trust with clients and employees through transparency and empowerment. Obviously, I'm kind of making all of this up, but the great thing about interior design is you're kind of making everything up as you go along, but that's what makes it fun. After you've set the stage with the client's core values, it's time to select your key themes. This is where you need to turn on your creative brain. Take what you learned from their core values and what their intended vision is and start coming up with some words or ideas that could be translated into the physical space. In the interview, they told us that they want their new office to have an adventurous vibe, but they don't give us any specifics to what that means. It's our job to figure out what it does mean. Sometimes if I've been given an important word or notice that a client has been reiterating or lingering on one specific word, I will literally go into Google and Google that word and get some different definitions of it, as well as do an image search on some images that would spark some ideas about that word. It actually happens a lot. I've spent many hours intensely re researching one word that the client was like insisting we focus on to come up with our visual aesthetic. I don't know, even if the word literally means nothing, I've had to do that several times. So the client has told us that they want an adventurous feeling space. What the fuck does that even mean? I have no idea. Let's Google it. So when I type adventurous into thesaurus.com, I get synonyms like bold, courageous, and brave. Uh, I like the direction of those words. It's getting a little bit more specific about what the mood can feel like. Let's click on brave and see what comes up. Okay, so here we get confident, fearless. Those words definitely emit the feelings of a huge tech firm and like business company, companies doing business, businesses doing business, being a business person. Spirited is also a good one to suggest it's not all work with no play. Um, okay, now let's image search this word. We are not creating an image board quite yet, so don't get too hung up on the images, but if you happen to waltz by an image that strikes your fancy, save it for later. You could use it for your image board when we get to that phase. The two sites that I usually use for imagery in terms of like the conceptual piece of it are Pinterest and Pexels. I really love Pexels because it gives you high quality stock images, especially for this, like we're trying to find a word that visually says like adventurous without saying adventurous, you'll find a lot of great images for that. 
on pexels.com. So far, what I'm seeing is a lot of nature images. Adventure seems to be tied with doing a lot of outdoor activities, like hiking and standing at the top of a mountain. Standing at the top of a mountain would certainly give you that feeling of like adventure, as well as those other words like bravery and confidence. I like that. I do remember seeing references to nature on Deloitte's website, so I'm thinking we need to lean into that. I'm going to make my first key theme natural exploration. These words are not set in stone. I usually go back like 10 times to revise what those actual final words will be, but natural exploration is kind of the, the gist of what we're looking to achieve. You could argue that I can just use the word adventurous, but I, um, I don't want to. Our next key theme should have a reference to the project location, which is Chinatown. Just like many other cities across the world, Chinatown is a neighborhood in New York City that originated from a large community of Chinese immigrants. To this day, it is the largest concentration of Chinese people in the Western Hemisphere, which I didn't know until I Googled that. It spans about two square miles of New York City, and it's located near the Lower East Side of Manhattan. The architecture is definitely old New York, with most of the buildings being old tenement buildings. You won't see many brand new high rises or modern apartment complexes, which is part of what makes this area so like cool and special. Most of the buildings here date back to like the 19th century. To be clear, we are not making a Chinese inspired mood board, but we can reference the architecture of the neighborhood. With all of this, I'm thinking our next key theme could be authenticity. I don't really like that word, but I can't think of a better word right now. So maybe one that means like, exposed structure, like bare bones. If you have any better words than authenticity for this, then please let me know down in the comments. <laughs> Although I didn't seek out an actual space for our fictional client, therefore I do not have an idea of what the space will look like, but because we're in Chinatown, we can assume it would be in one of these old tenement buildings with exposed brick and old windows and doors, maybe exposed beams and structure, and not just with the space itself. Deloitte on their website talks a lot about building trust, and you could argue that having authenticity and transparency is a way to build trust. Listen, I'm just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And um, if you're still with me, then thank you. Because they're a tech company and one of the core values is to lead the way, I assume in the form of new technology and solutions, then the third theme should be innovation, probably. Yeah, let's do innovation. I would recommend having between three to four key themes, less and you don't really have enough to work with, and more, you're trying to squeeze too many ideas into one project, it can get to be a lot. And if you're intimidated by this step at all, don't worry, it took me years of practice and many, many projects to consider myself even remotely good at building a good concept and all of these like interesting words. Over time, coming up with clear themes and being able to communicate them succinctly will get easier easier, so just keep practicing. All right, so now we have our research done, our core values determined, and our key themes created. It's finally time to look at pretty pictures. <laughs> For a concept, I typically create two different imagery boards. The first is conceptual or the mood board. What is a mood board? It visually sets the mood. Good job, you're catching on. The mood board is essentially taking our key themes and all of those words we were looking up and then gathering images that emit that mood. Our goal is to create a mood board that says adventure and all the other key theme words without saying adventure and using those words. The man standing on top of the mountain is perfect for that. I'm trying to create like a, a balanced mood board that has a bunch of different elements in it, not just all nature stuff, not just all text stuff. They don't need to be an actual space. They can just be a conceptual image. When you're creating a mood board, I just like to choose images that go together in a balanced way. If you have like a bunch of colors all over the place or different tones, it's not really gonna look like it goes together. If you can notice all of the images I'm pulling right now have a warm, undertone. So even though like the mountain image and the tech chip image, whatever the heck that image is, they are totally different, but they have a similar tone and colors in them like browns, like a little bit of like bluish or greenish. So yeah, that's just kind of how I select images that are just all gonna go together and look nice together. As you can see, I'm reusing some of the images from the theme slide in the mood board. That is okay, but I would be selective of that. You don't wanna reuse the same images over and over too much, but if there's one or two images that are really conveying your concept, I say go ahead. 
For me, it's the image of the guy on the mountain. I love that image. I think it's really beautiful and I think it, it, it emits that mood very well. I like the colors and it's just like, it's just overall a very compelling image. The second type of board you're gonna create is going to be your inspiration imagery. This is where we start to turn our woo-woo concept into something realistic and tangible. Our mood board was very loose and random. Our inspiration imagery board will be all images of real spaces and ways in which we can use design to portray our mood and our themes. For this board, I pretty much solely use Pinterest and Office snapshots. If you have one takeaway from this video at all, it is Office snapshots. It is a collection of real photos of real projects all around the world, and it's such a great source of inspiration. There's also healthcare snapshots, education snapshots, snapshots, hospitality snapshots, and home snapshots, so you can get inspiration for literally every type of project you're working on. So how do you go about finding an inspiration image that conveys the same visual messaging as the images on your mood board and your key themes? I like to look at the colors, the shapes, the patterns in those mood board photos and then see if I can find any of those in real life installation images. For example, I'm selecting photos with browns, blues, and greens and I found this really nice wall covering that almost looks like the shape of a mountain. I'm also looking out for any images that have a balance of exposed structure to represent like our Chinatown tenement building and technology, AKA this is a tech forward company. I I really like the image on the right, which is why I've made it a little bit bigger. That's another tip. If there's one image that is conveying your message more strongly than the others, make it bigger on the page. Make that stand out. Make that photo the main talking point. So I like this one on the right because it looks like this office is set in an older building. It's got the exposed brick, but it is juxtaposed with a lot of modern elements like those blue, I guess they're transparent glass doors with lighting and like it, it looks like a really great balance of that old building structure with the technology. And then I have a piece of wood. We're probably gonna have a lot of wood in this space. The image in the top between the wood and the wall covering I put there, that it shows two people interacting, two people working and collaborating together. And that also is one of the goals is to create community and camaraderie and, and build trust. And so you can do that through a furniture piece like this. So maybe this is a furniture piece that we would actually specify for this project. And there you have it. We have successfully completed a design concept for our client. At this point, we would present it to them and probably make a few adjustments based on their feedback. And then we'd move on to the next phase of the project, which would be programming. Thank you again to everyone who submitted their ideas for this video on Instagram. If you enjoyed it, please do me a huge favor and like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and leave me a comment about what types of topics you'd like to see next. And if you want to be included in the next time I take to the gram to ask people to help me out with a future video, please do follow me on Instagram and then you can do that. <laughs> we post videos every Monday, so until then, have a great week. See you next time.